<laughs> pretty much. He, but I mean, he was, and I wonder like if almost he didn't say anything about it because like the flu game like it's got such like a stigma and ring to it that like if you're like oh, actually it's the food poisoning game like it, i don't know it just sound as cool <laughs> <laughs> um no you're not you're not wrong i mean i don't know i i think the food game obviously has a better ring to it but i mean it wasn't the case then but um did you guys find it funny when jordan uh kind of gave it the a-ok to finally release this documentary or start production um it kind of happened after lebron won his championship with cleveland and it was like the same exact day when he was like i guess during the parade or whatnot uh i know dylan you're a huge lebron fan but do you find it funny how he kind of put that you know in there he's like hey let's roll my documentary show with people uh what i'm what i'm about i have the i have the criminal towel from the from one of the <laughs> games from 2016 when they won um i think that jordan is smart enough to know that lebron is the only one who really has a shot of players like that are still in the league of being the goat i know jordan said in the documentary he doesn't like to consider himself the goat because he thinks it's disrespectful to people like before him but i think it's pretty just well received that it's either lebron jordan or kareem to you and like those are the three and most people will go with Jordan over Kareem or LeBron, for that matter of fact. And I think Jordan was like, oh, wow, like, he just beat a team that won one more game than our team and came back from a 3-1. Like, let's not people forget what I did. I don't know if it was necessarily like he was like, LeBron's better than me. I got to, like, switch. But I think it was just kind of like, let's forget what had previously happened, what I did. Like, I had this dynasty for how long? Like, this is just one finals. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's been interesting to me that um, Jordan hasn't been able to have more success as an owner because you think, like, here's a guy clearly is a brilliant basketball mind, super competitive. Wouldn't guys want to come and play, like, in his franchise and stuff, but has never had a team that's ever, like, been considered a contender in, in all these years. So, I, yeah, I, I that don't know. That's another good point. I didn't even think about that. You're you're not wrong. I mean, I'm surprised he hasn't been able to instill that into his players' minds, you know, what to do. I mean, it also could be just a different time. You know, back then it was completely different than it is now. So but that's a really good point you bring up there. Um, I didn't even think about that question. So – or topic. So props to you, Tyler. <laughs> but uh, – but- I usually say it's one or the other. Like, if you're, like, such a great, amazing player like that, like, it's hard for you to recognize talent because, like, you just – like, the talent that you recognize is, like, top 2% versus where, like, Steve Kerr was, like, a role player. So then he goes and coaches the Warriors and creates, like, this amazing team because he can tell guys, like, know your role and this and that. And Jordan's just like, no, like, I'm Jordan. Like, I didn't have to know my role. <laughs> um, you're not wrong. I mean – it's it's interesting to to me all that stuff and I mean who knows down the line maybe maybe Jordan finally does have a winning team but I, I don't see that happening anytime soon. <laughs> but uh, do you guys think there will ever be another MJ Michael Jordan uh, esque player in the in the league? Ooh. I don't know. It's like you think you, you think it can't happen, but then I mean Kobe was pretty darn close. You know, I mean, he grew up watching – and, like, when – I think I, I – like, listen, I, I think Kobe's amazing and, um, you know, obviously unbelievable player and, and person. But every time I saw Kobe, I felt like he was just trying to be Michael Jordan, you know. And, like, LeBron, he, he's just – he's totally different, right? He's a totally different kind of player. He's not trying to be Jordan. He's not trying to be anybody else. He's just being himself and really separated himself because of the way he – um, like brings everybody together, you know, with his passing as well as the scoring and everything. And, and there's really nobody else that, that can do it like him. But um, I don't know if I see another Jordan coming along. I mean, but you, you say that, and then like this freak of nature, LeBron James, like you, you can't, like that's like a video game guy, you know, the six eight two sixty five guy that you know has athleticism like uh, I don't know, like a, a six two you know two hundred pound guy. So yeah, um, yeah. Like, I agree with what you said. Like, Kobe was, like, the, like, 
the Michael Jordan type player that like I grew up watching, like who just played just like MJ, like just modeled his game completely after him. And like, you can clearly tell in the way that he plays. I've seen so many like clips where like the two are just mashed together and it's like Jordan will start fading away, but then Kobe will finish like the shot and like, it just like they have the same motions. I just don't know if they're all to be a dominant player like Jordan again, who just wins so much. Like you look at LeBron and how like talented he is and to think like even he's only at three and he's been to eight finals. Like I just don't know if there will be a team that just works so well. Like that Warriors team, like everybody looked at them. Oh my, like how is this ever going to like fail? And then Kevin Durant leaves and like it, they only got two with Durant. Yeah, that – I mean, this it's such a loaded question. Uh, I mean, I don't know if there'll ever be another Michael Jordan, but, you know, who knows who's producing, you know, crazy babies anywhere. <laughs> like, someone might might be the next uh, over Michael Jordan, and who knows, maybe there'll be someone better than him. But you are you are right. I mean, Kobe did kind of emulate that shot, you know, that iconic jump away, fader shot. I mean, I'm pretty sure Michael Jordan helped him teach, or teach him that in a way, I believe. Uh, I'm not positive on that, but uh, I mean, it is kind of crazy to even think about. Um, but now, uh, Dylan, I do want to hit on the point that you brought up earlier with Dennis Robin. Um, so, I mean, obviously, the dude lived a wild lifestyle, you know, dating, you know, w- women like Carmen or Electra, uh, you know, and, you know, just had a whole different lifestyle. But would you say he's the Gronk of the 90s? <laughs> I. I mean, I, I mean, Dennis Rodman, like, Gronk isn't in the same ballpark as him, but I guess it's process ball, maybe. Hey, hey, before, before we kind of dig deep into this, Gronk, I will say, is not obviously the Dennis Rodman, but, I mean, he's the PG style of Dennis Rodman, like, you know, going to partying and being crazy, but Dennis Rodman is a whole other level, man. <laughs> I mean, I don't think there will ever be another – Dennis Rodman I mean yeah the hair the piercings the crazy girlfriend the crazy just quotes that would come out of his mouth the crazy actions and then even on the court I mean just a complete bruiser like mind games left and right with people like this dude was just nuts <laughs> like his, and now like like even today like friends with like Kim Jong-un like hanging out with him <laughs> this dude's just on another planet <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. oh my gosh, what what a nut, man! I mean, like, and dressing up like as a woman, like putting on a wedding dress, like to promote his book. It's like, where does this guy come up with this stuff? You know, <laughs> T- Tyler, I, what would you do if uh, you got piercings right now and came home to your family with all those on? <laughs> I I better be coming home with you know millions of dollars in contracts like he had. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I mean. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'll get it. Maybe it'll change my look and be really cool. I mean, Dylan, you could probably pull it off too. Of course. <laughs> Duh. Why? Why not? But um, yeah, would uh, what? Leopard print in my hair and everything. <laughs> I mean, maybe that's. A, I mean, history repeats itself. Who knows? There's definitely gonna be someone out there doing the same thing. But um, what did you think of literally him doing whatever the hell he wants to do? Like. I mean, Dill mentioned it earlier about, you know, going to, you know, Las Vegas because he needed a break or, um, you know, he went to the wrestling show or he went to wrestling during the finals. Like, that's just insane. I mean, I'm, Tyler, I'm sure during that time you're like, you, when you heard about that, you're like, what? But like that, that stuff, I mean, that would have never got happened in today's world. <laughs> I know. Like, it's just unheard of. And the fact that Phil was like, all right, got to give him space. You know, he'll show up and he'll be ready to go. And and Jordan had the same mentality. He's like, he'll get the job done. I'm not worried about Dennis. You know, like, that, that just takes, like, such confidence and, um, and and being able to, like, let go and not, like, have control over everything. Because so many coaches want to just, like, have control. This is the way we do it. And we're not allowing that stuff. And, like, and I get it. You know, you have to have standards and boundaries. But they just knew with Dennis, he is, like, totally, like, he's got his own set of rules compared to everybody else in the team. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> the Vegas thing during the regular season, I was like, this is, like, crazy out of line. But, I mean, during the finals, man, like, <laughs> and then they were asking him about it, and he goes, well, it was going to be a $50,000 fine for missing practice. And I knew that was coming. But 
WCW was going to pay me 250000 to come party with Hulk Hogan. So, I don't know. <laughs> that seemed to work out for me. And then <laughs> they were talking about running for the next practice, and Jordan was, like, telling everybody, like, you guys are going to go slow. We're going to jog around this because we are not, like, gassing ourselves for him. And then Dennis just sprints past them all. I'm like <laughs> – <laughs> He's an interesting dude. I mean, there's really nothing you can say besides he's interesting. I mean, obviously, today's world is completely different with social media, so that would have never gotten away with. But, I mean, back then, I mean, you always hear athletes back then saying, oh, yeah, the stuff we did last, you know, back then would have never happened in today's world. So, I mean, it's just really funny to me. But do you think that um, with the with the Bulls, um, they're like – and if they were to play in this generation, you know, this this year, do you think they'd still be that successful high platform team, or do you think they kind of would have been average? Bill, it's all you. What do you think? I think that the team. I mean, today's league is a lot more centered around the three point shot than it was back then. Mm-hmm. But I think like, the team was talented enough to adapt to that. I think Michael Jordan would have developed a three point shot. I mean, like we saw in that. Uh, the finals against Drexler. He proved that he could shoot if he wanted to. Pippen was always decent at shooting. Rodman even had a 20-footer by 98 there. And then you had shooters on the team throughout the years like Armstrong, Paxson, Kerr. So I think that they would have been fine. I think stretching the floor might have been a little tough for them. But I think defensively, that team would be ridiculous in today's league. I think the size and length that they have and then the physicality that they had from back then in today's league. I remember back when, like, the Warriors won 73 games and there was the debate about which team would win. I think that the Bulls team would beat that Warriors team in about five games. Wow. (laughs) Kevin Durant wasn't there. So then you could just put Jordan on Curry and Pippen on Thompson. And then it's just Terrace and Barnes being guarded by Ron Harper, who's like 6'6 at point guard. Like, it would have been fine. I, but I don't think Curry could have defended Jordan. And if you put Clay Thompson on him, like, who's defending Pippen? <laughs> I 